Now, when you were writing memos at the Office of Legal Counsel under Bush, uh, President Bush 43, were you, did you understand yourself to be explicating prerogative, mm -hmm. or were you simply um, looking at written law and, and the constitutional text to determine whether waterboarding or any of these other sort of interrogation techniques pass muster? Well, I don't think they, you could uh, untangle the two uh, functions uh, so neatly because uh -huh. normally what we do in the Justice Department would be the, the latter. Uh, their government wants to undertake some policies or actions. Are they consistent with the written law, with the statutes, with the Constitution? Sure. But 9-11 itself was that kind of unforeseen emergency and crisis mm -hmm. that made a lot of the written laws, uh, the, the law of the written laws just never anticipated something like that. So you had to, in figuring out whether the laws apply, also think of the prerogative question. Uh, to take one easy example would be the collection of intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, right before 9/11, mm -hmm. the laws are written and understood to prevent the, the sharing of information between the FBI and the CIA, which actually prevents us from uh, sh the CIA from sharing information on two of the hijackers they knew mm -hmm. were in the country right. with the FBI. This there's firewall a, between yes. the yeah. So there's a number of changes made, not just to written law, but just by executive practice to overcome that because everyone realized right after, right on the day 9-11, that wall caught, well, didn't cause 9-11, but prevented us from seeing that it was coming and had to be done away with. But the people who wrote the law originally, you know, they can't be blamed. It mm -hmm. wasn't their fault. They, no one could foresee something but like that, the 9-11 But we're in, in, in undertaking your, your um, advising of the president um, from the Department of Justice where you were, did you understand your advice to be legal or moral advice? Oh, or both? Actually, purely legal uh -huh. and not moral. Um, and I think this is a, something that surprised me, actually, about the way government functions today as opposed to what we read about with the Washington cabinet meeting about the neutrality proclamation or the, the team of rivals in the Lincoln cabinet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. arguing about war decisions. The government today is so highly specialized that you know, people have different specialties and functions and you're expected to answer the question in your area. Mm -hmm. Is this legal, right? Would it be legal to invade Iraq? This is a great question. Is it legal to yeah. invade Iraq? So I answered that question. But is it a good idea to invade Iraq? Is it moral to invade Iraq? You know, my view has no standing when That's it comes to That's not my department. Questions. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's someone else's but, job. But that makes sense if there's someone higher up who is combining moral exactly. and and uh, legal perspectives. But uh, in an interview with Matt Lauer of NBC News, uh, uh, Bush was asked the following question, mm -hmm. President Bush, why is waterboarding legal in your opinion? And Bush replied, because the lawyers said it was legal. What a good client. <laughs> <laughs> you got to trust the judgment of the people yeah. around you, he continued, yes. and I do. But is that, is that a good answer for a president to give? See, that's, that's the thing. I think the lawyers, when they do their job right, can say, here is the scope of action. Right? The law says you can't drive faster than 55 miles an hour. The law doesn't tell you whether to drive 55 or 45. Right? Right. The, there's, the harder question is still, as you say, the moral, the policy question. And I do think, having served in the government and watched it the way it functioned those few years and since, is that that part of the reasoning of the government is lacking. We don't really have a good mechanism in the mm -hmm. government for people to sit down and undertake sort of fundamental strategic thinking, moral thinking. So, well, you could say if it, it, it could fall under the lawyer's um, portfolio if you were looking at, at natural law as well as positive law. Mm. I mean, in the old mm -hmm. days, that may well have been, mm -hmm. you know, the way. Uh, uh, Secretary of State or uh, mm -hmm. an Attorney General might have looked at the question that it's not it is of course a question of positive law that is the constitution and and statutes but there's also a sort of unwritten law or moral law that has to be considered alongside it yeah. now we as you say i think we do tend to separate those two and that's actually something about the i think the way conservatives have responded to the 60s mm -hmm. right so one answer which i think is probably the mainstream answer amongst conservative lawyers and judges is that where the warren court in the 60s went wrong is that they put too much of them, their personal morality into their answer of legal questions. And so one response was not to say, which I think you're suggesting, is they use the wrong morality. Right. Or they had this, the wrong 
system of ethics when they interpreted the Constitution. Instead, the answer of people like Bork, for yes. example, or sure. Scalia, sure. Right, is actually what you do is drain all legal questions of any moral content. Right? Just give the right legal answer. And what you're suggesting is something that I think a lot of conservative lawyers who work in the Bush administration would have vehemently resisted, which yes. is the idea of you know, underlying, the, but which I think is truer to the framing and truer to Lincoln, certainly, would be you know, the laws are built on top of or in a product of a certain moral universe, a certain set mm -hmm. of understanding of natural law that has to pre, just the way the Declaration of Independence underlays and pre-exists the Constitution. But to do that, you have to break that kind of criticism of the Warren Court and the 1960s that really has been a fundamental part of conservative so, thinking. A, a final question on this point. Yeah. So in, in your enterprise when you were employed by the government, the, uh, the traditional definitions of just war theory were beyond your assignment. They were not part of your, your reasoning in, in trying yeah. to determine whether or not things like waterboarding were... Yes, yeah, so a, a good example is so, uh, the Iraq War or the... I mean, part of, yeah. part, I was just saying, yeah. part of just war theory is going to war, but the other is yeah. conduct in the war, war, use yes. in bellow, as they used to say. Yes, yes. We can never use enough Latin. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so with Iraq, so Iraq or the war in China, the use ad bellum question, the yeah. right to go to war, what we did is we analyzed international law. We analyzed the U.S. Constitution. Right. We never delved deeper, although I'm, I was aware of it. I mean, mm -hmm. this is uh, what my next book is going to be on is about. Oh, is that right? Yeah, my next book is going to be about preventive war. Oh. I've just mm -hmm. really got my fingers crossed that Israel does not attack Iran before the book comes out. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the idea was that we would look at the existing laws mm -hmm. as they were now, but we did go deeper into the just war tradition. Right. And to say, is this really a moral war? Would attacking Iraq, and, you know, which is something that uh, you know all those you know bald monks in the Middle Ages spent thousands of years arguing about, yes. and uh, came up with a very intricate system of thinking about it, which has all you know, kind of been lost to us. I mean, we don't really use it in thinking in the government anymore about these questions. But so my answer was that what I did in the government. I said, okay, here I think the war in Iraq is would be legal under international law. Here's my personal view on whether this is a good idea. But that personal yeah. view as a lawyer, I have to make clear, is just is not, is not legally compelling. It's just my opinion as a citizen, really, or someone who's just educated on the issues. Mm -hmm. And so because of the way the government is structured and functioned, that kind of opinion gets no real special weight. That's a job more of the Powells and the Rumsfelds sure. and the... Sure and the uh, Cheneys and the Rices of the world. But they might have benefited from your moral counsel. <laughs> Almost certainly they would have. <laughs>